all of the questions that people have about moving averages, how to insert. What's the best time frame to use moving averages? What's the best number to use? Should I use short term, medium term, or long term moving averages? Which type should I use? How to use it to determine trend direction and entry points? How many moving averages should I use? 1, 2, 3, 1,000, 10,000? How many? What's the magic number? Okay, risk of using moving averages. So what is a moving average? It's a smooth up version of the price action and it's a trend following indicator mostly used by traders and also investors. Okay, so investors also use moving averages to determine when to exit, when to enter. So some functions of moving averages used to determine long term, medium term and short term trends okay can be used in all time frames used to point out the general direction is it on an uptrend downtrend ranging market it smooths out the price data later i'll show you a chart you understand what i mean used for trend following okay helps you determine whether you're trading along or against the trend as a beginner make sure you trade along with the trend okay so there are a couple of functions of moving averages Helps you indicate a potential reversal. Let's say you're holding a trade and you don't know when it's going to U-turn and then go back down or go back up in the opposite direction. You can use moving averages as one of your confirmation, not the only indicator that you should use, okay? Use in momentum and volatility indicators like MACD, Bollinger Bands, and it's used as a dynamic support resistance area. Keyword here is area, okay? A lot of people think that moving averages is a line, but if you see it differently, it's actually an area where price will bounce off, okay? And you can use it for retracement entry. Make sure you're writing all this down, don't just listen. If you want to trade differently from other traders, you can use moving averages to look at what a typical retail trader does and then you do the exact opposite so if you use it with other price action strategies and your other analysis fundamental sentiment it's going to help you increase the probability of your trade entries and also help you exit a trade very important where you exit is more important than where you enter if I choose to make a buy today, okay, and then another trader choose to sell. You bought the trade, the price goes down a little bit before it goes back up to hit your target price. That trader makes money. The trader who sold, okay, price goes down, takes profit over here, and then the price goes back up. Both traders make money. The only difference is that they exit at different levels you see that so if you're looking for a buy trade today what you need to do is to make sure that you are trading on an uptrend very simple you just take a long-term moving average of 200 sma okay first thing first look at the price action relative to the ma where is it where is it you want it to be above above the moving average okay second step look at the slope of the ma if you want a proper uptrend you want the moving average to be sloping upwards because it shows that traders are optimistic then if you're looking for an entry okay after a retracement you don't want to buy here and you don't want to buy here because the distance of the candlesticks from the MA is too far away. And if you know how price action behaves, eventually it has to come down. It has to come down and stick to the MA or go near the MA. And you realize that the price tend to test this area. Okay, bounce off. Then bounce off. Okay, you realize that it's like an area. But it's not going to go so far until like all the way here, okay? Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense to put an MA to begin with. 
My point is, this is a better place to enter with candlestick confirmation. Okay, you can see that long lower wick. Okay, long lower wick, which shows that price has a high chance of going back up. And it's very near the MA, very near the MA. It goes against your human nature psychology. You know what I'm saying? Because we all like to buy when the price is oh going up, going up, going up. Agree with me? That's why you need to go against your human tendency. Buy when the price comes back down near to the MA. Okay? Then for sell trade, just flip it around, flip it around. Make sure that the price, first thing first, is below, below your moving average, okay? Step number one, done. Step number two, remember the slope. You want the slope to be going downwards. So, step number two, criteria is fulfilled. Criteria number two is fulfilled. Then you want to sell here or here. Of course, on hindsight, you can easily tell, but if you can't easily, you can tell, oh my god, the distance between the candlesticks from the moving average. Just not a good time to go in. Even though, even though it's human nature to be like, oh my god, price is going down, going down, going down, let me sell. Agree with me? So this would be a better entry as compared to here. Agree with me? When the trend is down, price is making lower lows, lower highs, it tells you that people are pessimistic. Okay? So when prices are volatile, volatile, okay, you can see that the longer term moving averages, it doesn't get affected that easily. If you use a moving average like a 5 EMA, for example, price is gonna go like this. It's gonna be almost as volatile as the price action. Okay? You get my point. So this is what I mean by moving and we just molding out prices. Okay? The higher the MA period, the less volatile it is. Okay? There are pros and cons of both types of MAs later I'll cover it. So MAs is also used in like I said, MACD and also stochastics and Bollinger Band. Alright? So for stochastics, it is used under the slow percentage D. If you have watched my stochastics video, it is used under the 9 period signal line. It's also used in this indicator called force index. So even if you don't use moving averages, and use other indicators, you still in a way have to learn moving averages because it's used in so many different indicators. Okay? So some benefits of moving averages, it's less subjective as compared to trend lines, chart patterns. Because chart patterns, example. You see a symmetrical triangle, maybe I'll see an ascending triangle instead. And trend lines, like you can draw 10 trend lines, I might only draw two. Okay, whereas for moving averages, the line is gonna look exactly the same. That's why it's useful for EA traders. It can be used for short to long term trading as well as investing, like I said just now. Some secrets that you might want to know, which it works better in the trading market. Okay, so please don't use it in a ranging market because it's gonna give you four signals false signals. Don't use it in a volatile market like prices are going crazy. You don't know whether it's ranging, you don't know whether it's trending. Don't use it. The lower the number, the more frequent price sticks to it and more responsive it is to price movements like I showed just now. Higher numbers generate less trading signals but less false signals, okay? So if you use like 5 EMA, example, there's going to be so many crossovers, but not all of them is going to work out. A lot of it is not going to work out. Whereas if you use 200 SMA, okay? 
there might be less crossovers. Okay, it might lead you to question: Am I using the right kind of indicator? Why is it not giving me any signals? Why am I not trading at all? But most of those trades are going to be profitable. Do you want to get cheated more often, or do you want to make more money? Okay, ask your ex. Just like any other indicators, it works better in higher time frames. So if you use it in like M1 time frame, don't expect it to work out again and again and again and again. Okay, just to warn you, I know a lot of people like to scalp nowadays. Different types of moving averages perform best at different times. Some people ask, is SMA better than EMA? Depends on when you use it. Is a small number better than a higher number? Depends on when you use it. What you use it for. Distance between gap determines strength of trend. And also, you need to remember that smaller numbers give you earlier signals. Bigger numbers give you slower signals. But they are more reliable. Smaller numbers give you faster signals. More signals, but they are less reliable. So some mistakes that you should avoid making. Don't go around finding the best number. Like a lot of people like to ask, Karen, okay, what is the best number to use? Best period, best moving average type. There's no best period, best moving average type. Different types, different numbers work in different market conditions. Let's say for a trending market, okay, the best moving average to use is the larger numbers. Okay, but then for a volatile market that is like breaking out, a small moving average number will be better because it gives you faster signals to get in. Depends on the context. Also, don't use too many moving averages. At most, go to three. Like there, are people use five, six, seven, using periods that are too close to each other. Like let's say for example, you're using Fortnite as a main. You don't want to add another moving average and be extra. Let me add 190 SMA. For what? Like it's gonna stick to each other so often, it's gonna become a line. And also, don't make the gap too wide. What do I mean? Let's say if you are using 200 SMA, you don't want to use an SMA that is so far away from it. Let's say you use 5 EMA. The difference is 195. But if you tell me, Karen, I'm using 50 SMA, then it's a lot better. Ideally, ideally, okay, don't use it in a sideways or choppy market. Even though, yes, smaller MAs, you can use it for slightly more volatile markets. But why would you want to trade in, a, in such a risky market when you can wait for a proper trend to come? Just like how people who are supposed to trade dollar yen, euro dollar, they couldn't find a trading signal. You know what, there's no trading signal. Let me try and find a trading signal in a currency that I don't understand. Exotic pair. Entering a trade when the price is too far away from average. Showed you just now. Not learning how to spot false signals. False crossovers. Knowing when not to trade is just as important as knowing when to trade. Remember that. Using it as the only trade entry signal you know let me just enter when there's a crossover if it is that easy man everybody will become linear this is a confirmation use it as a confirmation let's say if you expect that okay based on central bank actions based on economic indicators based on sentiment volatility index safe haven currencies all of them are telling you the market is switching to a risk of environment and you see a crossover where the 50 SMA is below 200 SMA. Okay, that's a good confirmation. Agree with me? So moving averages, there are many different types actually. Not only simple exponential moving average, but also volume linearly weighted moving average. Smooth SMA, which is further divided into triangular MA. Hull moving average, geometric moving average, but for simplicity's sake, okay, let's not make things complicated for you. We'll focus on simple and exponential. 
Okay? Main difference between SMA and EMA, I'm not going to talk about the formula, but EMA, it gives more weight, gives more weight to the recent data. That is why it will respond faster to changes in price action. Okay? EMA is more suitable for those who trade smaller time frames, for shorter term traders. Whereas for SMA, I would say it's more suitable for longer term traders. Longer term traders and EMA for shorter time frames, short term traders. Of course, there are traders who combine both, okay? Combine both. And linear moving average also gives more weight to recent price data. Then what's the difference between EMA and linear moving average? EMA is just lower than linearly weighted moving average, okay? So EMA is faster than SMA, but slower than linearly WMA. So it's like somewhere in between. And also linear weighted moving average, it allows you to assign the weight to whatever that you feel that is suitable for you, okay? Whereas for EMA, it assigns more weight to the most recent price data. And because this is slightly more complicated, it's better for you to use EMA as compared to linear moving average. Then the question is, is SMA or EMA better? If you have listened carefully just now, you probably already know the answer. Okay, it depends. So you can see that if I put two types of MAs together, this is actually SMA. Simple moving average, I'm just going to put an S. And this is EMA. Okay? Let's say I have a 50 SMA and 50 EMA. Red color is the SMA. Then blue color is the EMA. What do you observe from how they react to prices? Can you see? It's a bit chaotic, but if you look carefully, you'll see it. Okay? If you look at this point okay do you realize the blue line makes a u-turn first before the red line red line only makes a u-turn here right slightly later and also over here blue line starts to turn down first and red line somewhere over here which is about the same time okay but this is more obvious. So you can already tell that EMA responds faster to changes in price action. But also gives you more false signals. So if you don't want things to be that chaotic, you can opt for SMA instead. And SMA is suitable for position traders because they are trading long term. Okay, another example. Okay, so now I'm using 100 SMA with 100 EMA, you see the same thing again, okay? Price comes down over here, starts to come down over here. Then our EMA starts to turn down first. Agree with me? Same thing as compared to when it is reversing price you turn first before our red line. Same thing for this part over here, right? EMA starts to turn up first, but then SMA is still going down. This doesn't mean that EMA is better. What you want as a trader is not more trading signals. Agree with me? What you want as a trader is better signals. Remember that, okay? Remember that. So we compare both, okay? Put to a summary. Speed of SMA is slower. EMA is faster. Weightage, it gives equal weightage for all trading days. EMA assigns a greater weightage for the most recent trading day. That's why it reacts faster. SMA less signals but more accurate signals. Okay, EMA more signals but less accurate signals. Function of SMA can be used for determining the trend direction used in Bonjour bands, other indicators. EMA is used in MACD, crossovers, breakout trading to determine the real position of candles, okay? SMA is used for higher time frames, EMA is used for lower time frames, market conditions, SMA 
is more suitable to be used in stable trending market whereas EMA can be used for trending market as well All right, but it can be used also for volatile markets trader types, SMA, long term traders, position traders, swing traders EMA, short term traders like day traders one important point to take note of. there's no perfect moving average in terms of period and type so stop asking what is the best indicator moving average number, moving average strategy to use answer is it depends another thing the moving average period that you use is more important than the type of MA use if you have a choice to pick between two questions to ask a billionaire trader like George Soros which one would you ask? which moving average period should I use? or should I use SMA or EMA? if you have no choice, no other choice is what moving average period should I use? what is your risk management strategy? I would prefer to ask that question if I have a chance to talk to George Soros just now we were looking at two moving averages with the same number so let's change things a little bit let's use two different numbers okay so right now I have 50 SMA and 100 SMA okay but there are also traders who use 50 SMA and 200 SMA right so this is more for looking at the longer term trends if you are like super short term traders you can look at 10, 20 or 50 EMA remember when I said that EMA is used for short term trading okay and again it's very important to understand that it's not what you use it's how you use it because there are so many traders who use 20 EMA one use 20 SMA differently another use it for breakout another use it for like retracement trading another use it to prevent them from entering to trades so it's how you use it that's more important so let's just take 50 and 100 SMA for now and even though I'm showing you currency charts you can use these numbers for stocks trading too okay stocks investing too if you are stock investor look at the larger numbers like 200 SMA 150 SMA 100 SMA you can see that the 50 cross below the 100 this is the 50 this is the 100 this is telling you that the market is going on a downtrend of course there are false signals like this that cheat you okay we are going uptrend now but not really so it crossed over for a while then after that it go back down again you realize that your 50 SMA it turns first okay only then followed by your 100 SMA again over here 50 turn first followed by your 100 again a false signal over here right and remember that moving averages they are lagging indicators okay so sometimes you cannot afford to wait for a crossover then you enter but if you want to be safe wait for a crossover then you enter the trade aside from the crossing overs okay the other thing you need to look at is the gap between the moving averages when you have a gap like this okay you can tell that the trend the bullish trend is strong but when you see a gap like this okay it's very near to each other almost sticking to each other it tells you that the trend is not as strong it is getting weaker and weaker and weaker so ideally when you are trading you want the moving averages gap to be far away but still it is okay to enter if the lines are close to each other because there are people who enter based on retracement okay and you can see that this gap over here is not that wide because the price has to come down and bounce off the moving average as long as it doesn't cross over each other then it is still safe to enter okay doesn't mean that if it's near to each other then oh no no trade it depends on you if, if you're super super conservative you see this 
then you might not want to go in. And also the direction of the moving averages, you want both to be pointing the same direction. Okay? To tell you that, okay, this is a strong trend. If one is pointing sideways, okay, one is pointing sideways, and then one is going down, do you think that the bearish trend is strong? Not so much. So you can see that the price retrace back up and then come back down. You can see that this bearish trend is pretty chaotic. So when it's a bearish trend, you want both to be pointing in the same direction. When it's on a bullish trend, you want both to be pointing upwards. Okay, let me show you this example, okay? A lot of people don't realize this. What you might already know is that, okay, price, when it tests the moving average, when it tests your moving average, it's going to bounce off because, like I said, your moving average is a dynamic support resistance. When price tests this level, it's going to bounce off, tests this level, is going to bounce off, this level bounce off, okay? But do you also realize one thing is that it also acts as a support resistance for other moving averages. Let's say, for example, you take this blue line, 200 SMA, okay? The white line is 100 SMA. You can see that it bounces off from the 200 SMA over here. Agree with me? So the 200 SMA is like a resistance for the candlesticks and also for other moving averages. Also one more spot over here. It's not super precise but it still bounces off. 50 SMA bounces off 200 SMA. And why did price bounce off over here, here, here? here resistance zone okay okay so this is a good area of confluence if i look at this point over here candlestick confirmation plus resistance zone plus bouncing off moving averages three moving averages in fact this is a good place to sell agree with me you put your stop loss over here above resistance then you take the sell trade Again, this also applies to stocks traders. Make sure you're trading the more liquid stocks. Don't go and trade like penny stocks where nobody's touching, where the candlesticks is not even there, where it's not properly formed. Don't trade those. So one important point, just now I used a couple of moving averages, 50, 100, 200. There's no perfect combination. Okay? But... Don't go and pick moving averages that are way too far in terms of their difference. Like I said just now, example, if you want to use a 1 SMA for some reason, okay, then you want to add the second moving average, but then you put in a 1000 SMA. The difference is like 999. It's way too big. As long as the difference is not too wide, I'll say it's okay. Couple of strategies that you can use for moving averages. You can use the crossover strategy like I showed just now. And then you can use the retracement strategy, trend trading strategy. I'm gonna show you more charts later on. You can use all, you can use one, you can use two, depends on you. And also based on your risk appetite, which one suits your risk appetite more. Okay, so let's say I have the hundred SMA, 200 SMA here. We just focus on the crossover strategy, okay? It's fine to use two SMAs because there's really no evidence that EMA is better than SMA, okay? Even with SMA, it's gonna produce some false signals. You can see that, okay, price MA cross over over here, but then price action didn't really go down. It only ranges a little bit before it continues on the uptrend, another false signal over here, but the gap is not that wide, so it tells you that okay, maybe the trend, the bearish trend is not going to work out. Crossover over here, again, these two lines are very near to each other, so it tells you that okay, maybe the bearish trend is not going to come. Agree with me? Again, one more false crossover over here. Doesn't mean that if you use SMA, then there will be no false signals. With any indicator, there will be false signals. Just that, SMA has less false signals. And if we go all the way back to 
2008. Okay. Moving average can sometimes give you an early signal that stock market is going to drop, but it's not guaranteed because you can see that the 50 SMA it starts to turn down. Of course, price action already told you that price might go on a downtrend because it's making lower highs and then lower lows. Alright, so don't rely too much on indicators when you have the price action to tell you stuff. By the time the stock market drop, then the crossover happen. Some people call this the death crossover, doesn't matter. It tends to lag behind price. Agree with me? But it also can tell you when the market's going to recover. You can see that stock market starts to turn up over here. Agree with me? Then the 50 SMA starts to turn up. If you're bought here, you still make a lot of money in the long term. And you can see that 50 SMA also became a support resistance area. Price bounce off over here, over here, over here, over here as well. Agree with me? Bounce off 200, over here. So the good thing about moving average is that you can use it for many different purposes. So let's look at three moving averages. Just now when we are looking at two moving averages, for an uptrend, you want the smaller SMA to be above the larger SMA. Let's say you're using 50 and 200. If you're using 3, then it's the same thing. For an uptrend, you want the 50 SMA to be above your 100 SMA. In this case, because we are using 100 SMA. 100 SMA to be above 200 SMA. Okay, for downtrend, just flip it around. 200 to be above 100, 100 to be above 50. If you're using 2, 200 to be above 50. Okay, so in this case, this is a good uptrend. These are 50. This white line. It's the 100, do line is 200. Okay, so it's a strong uptrend. Of course, along the way, you have false crossovers, 50 cross below 100, but it's still okay to buy over here on a retracement if you trade CFDs, okay? Because your 200 SMA is still sloping up. Okay, if I zoom in, 200 SMA is still sloping up, it's still fine. What you don't want is the 200 SMA to start sloping down, going sideways. And then you see this crossover between 50 and 100. Then you need to start to get out. Let's say for example over here. Your 200 SMA is starting to go sideways. Agree with me? Then when you see this crossover, you need to be careful. As compared to this crossover. You see the difference? This crossover, 200 SMA is still going up. This crossover, 200 SMA is going sideways. By this point over here, you should get out. Okay, so there are some factors that will help you increase the strength and probability of your MA. It's the number of tests. Later, I'll show you one example. Angle of moving average, make sure it's sloping in the direction that you want. Level of confluence, just now I showed you one example already. Trending market, use it in a trending market. And also, use it in a higher time frame. As well as volatility, you don't want to use it in a volatile market. You want a nice, trending, stable market. Okay, so this is Fibonacci. For an uptrend, what you do is that you draw your Fibonacci from the swing low, recent swing low, to the recent swing high over here. Then you want the price to retrace to the 50% level and also the 61.8% level. The 38.2% level is not enough in my opinion. It's still quite far away from the mean value. So you can see that price retrace to our 200 SMA, okay, 200 SMA, which is the red color line, and also tested 50% up to 
Again, you want to make sure that it is above your 200 SMA and it is sloping up. So this is a confluence area. Then you look at your candlestick pattern. Okay, you have a bullish candlestick signal. Agree with me? So there are a couple of confirmations that the price is going to go back up. So this would be a better entry point as compared to, let's say for example, here. Agree with me? Over here it is testing 23.6%. Not enough of a retracement. Still too far away from moving average. No confluence whatsoever. So not that of a good buy trade. Even though yes, you can enter here, but then you can only take profit until here. Resistance. This one also not that good because it is testing 38.2% and it is testing the 100 SMA, of course, still might work out, still might work out. And the price retrace here because it tested this support zone turn resistance. So I'll give you another example. Apple stock, 100 SMA, 200 SMA. Okay. Is this a better entry point? Number one. Or is this a better entry point? Number two, based on what I taught you, which is a better entry point. If you're a risk taker, then maybe number one, but if you want a higher probability trade, okay? Point number two, price retrace to 200 SMA, tested a support zone that has been tested a few times already. Now it's the third test or the fourth test. So a better entry point is number two, okay? Of course, make sure you look at your candlestick confirmation. If there's a bearish candlestick at point number two, then you gotta wait for a bullish confirmation. If you use Fibonacci, you can add that indicator as an additional confirmation. And you can see that both are testing 61.8%, which is a good entry point. Agree with me? Again, I'm drawing this from this point until this swing high over here. So just now I said moving averages, you can use it in stochastics, right? Your blue line is percentage K. Percentage K. Orange line is percentage D. Which is your slow stochastics. Just a recap, your slow stochastics is actually a 3-day SMA of the percentage K, which is the blue line. So when percentage K is above D, just like over here, and it cross above the middle line, price will go up. When percentage D Orange line is above K, okay, blue line, just like over here, and it cross the white line. Price will have a tendency to go down. And you realize one thing, when stochastic lines cross the white line, price will cross the yellow line over here, which is a 14 SMA. Price cross, cross over here. And price cross over here. Cross over here. And price cross over here. Cross over here. And stochastics also crossed. Cross over here. Price cross over here. So for MACD, just a recap if you haven't watched my MACD video. Blue line is the MACD line. is equivalent to the 12... EMA minus 26 EMA. Okay, you can see that it uses moving averages. Our uh, 12 EMA minus 26 EMA. So our 12 EMA is the purple line. 26 EMA is the yellow line. Orange line is the signal line. Some people call it trigger line. 
it is the 9 EMA of the MACD line. So when the blue line is above the orange line, price will have a tendency to go up. When the orange line is above blue line, price will have a tendency to go down. Again, this is a lagging indicator, so if this doesn't work for you, then don't use it. Also, confirm this with the histogram. It shows you red color. And when the price is going up, histogram is going to be green color. Okay? Price going up, histogram turns green. So for Bollinger Bands, it is used as the middle line. This is the Bollinger Band 20 close, and it's basically function just like the typical 20 moving average. Just that Bollinger Bands tells you the volatility of the market. When is it overextended? And when is it going to bounce off from the lower band? Of, of course, it sometimes tends to stick to the lower band, doesn't bounce off, which happens a lot. But it can also act as a resistance. You can see that price bounce off over here. Over here. So when you're using moving arrangers, doesn't matter if you use it for indicators or just using the line, understand the risk, okay? It's a lagging indicator. So don't just rely on moving average alone. You gotta use your other types of analysis. It doesn't work all the time. No indicator is perfect. So don't beat yourself up if you traded into a false signal because it's just part of trading. Okay? Because there are a lot of false crossovers and you need to learn how to spot them. So use this as a complement sentiment analysis, internal market analysis as well as your risk management trading psychology okay because trading is supposed to be a whole package not just because of one indicator or two indicators so with that thank you for listening to me on this lecture hopefully it's gonna help you make more profits so with that talk to you in the next video bye